Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another edition of Intuitive Angling. Much appreciated you taking a little time to watch the video. And today I'm going to have a discussion on tell you when you need to use a shad pattern chatterbait versus a crawdad pattern chatterbait. I've got a simple system that will really allow you to make that determination. Definitely add up to some more fish for you when you're chatterbait fishing. Uh, real quick, just wanted to touch on one thing we did yesterday. If you guys saw the video I did yesterday on my train or Dalen trip, um, I've had a lot of different uh, inquiries about people as far as what exactly he does. And one of the great things he, or the great things he does is he can set up a uh, online programming system for you uh, based upon your, everything about your own personal body, what you're wanting to accomplish. Um, that's what he does as far as a remote training or if you're in the Springfield, Missouri, you can come into the Springfield Strength and Conditioning Gym and hook up with him. Again, I'll include Dalen's email address. You can contact him directly for more information on that. But it's, guys, it, it is the, it's the greatest thing you can do for yourself. Not only will it help you with all aspects of your fishing, it will help you in your everyday life. More energy, more vitality, more strength. It just makes life better all the way around. So I'd highly suggest it. So anyway, let's get into this here. So basically you've got, there's actually three different styles of chatterbaits. Um, there's, as far as the colors go, you've got, you've got a shad pattern like this with some type of a light colored skirt and some type of a shad pattern trailer. And then you'll have like a bluegill pattern. And then you've got a more of a crawdad pattern. And a crawdad pattern and a bluegill pattern can be pretty similar as far as greens and oranges and stuff. But as far as the craw goes, I've got like the zoom speed crawl back on it and it's like a green pumpkin sort of colored the same uh, way as a crawdad made to resemble a crawdad made to resemble a, some type of a shad the two so anyway i've got a pretty simple system on this what we'll talk about here a lot of people think that when you're trying to determine what color of chatterbait to use it's basically if the fish are feeding on shad or crawdads yeah that can have an element to play in it but guys, bass are opportunistic. If they, you know, if, if they're in a position where they can get a shad, they're going to get it. Same with a crawdad. If they're in a position to eat, to eat a crawdad, they're going to get that crawdad too. And they eat crawdads all year long. Daddy, get out of here. What get are you doing in there? Off your podcast. Okay. You ready to go night night? No. Okay, I'll be back, guys. I got to put Elijah to bed. Okay, guys, got Elijah put back in the bed. So anyway, what we're talking about here is um, the factors that really determine, you know, what colors it goes beyond just what the bass are feeding on, because that is one element of it, but it's not, to, in my opinion, the most deciding factor. In my opinion, the most deciding factor on the two different colors is the water clarity that you're fishing. I think water clarity has a lot to do with it, and not only the water clarity, but also the wind, the sunlight conditions, um, the cover that you're fishing, all those type of variables there. It has to, a lot of stuff to do with it. First of all, one of the things that I'll tell you about water clarity, and this is sort of my determination, is I like a shad pattern, specifically one that has some white and chartreuse on it, anytime that water visibility is like under, say, two foot or so. If you've got, you know, anywhere between a foot to two foot of visibility, I find that a shad pattern works really good. And the, sh and the exact pattern depends on exactly how clear or dirty it is. The dirtier it is, the more like chartreuse that I'll put in or the more like just the flat white and maybe a little bit brighter shad tail with maybe a little bit of chartreuse in it, something to brighten it up a little bit. Um, and as it gets closer to that two foot range, that's when I go to more of the translucence with a more of a clear type shad pattern on there. Also, another thing that I found out about shad patterns is they work really good in really cold water or really hot water. So one of the first things I do in an early season chatterbait bite is when that water temperature is just starting to say hit 50 degrees, where that's sort of like the window for a lot of people when they first start fishing one, I get a lot more bites on a shad pattern in that cold water especially if it's a little bit dirty than i do on a crawdad pattern and it's the same in the summer it's like when that water temperature starts to get <clears throat> like in the 80s <clears throat> excuse me um same type of deal you know warm water a little bit dirty water the shad patterns are going to outproduce now the crawdad patterns are my favorite colors to fish i've had a lot more success overall on the chatterbait on some type of a crawdad pattern than i have a shad pattern i'm going to guess that probably 
75% uh, of my chatterbait fishing is some type of a crawdad type uh, pattern. And I usually like either a green pumpkin, uh, maybe some green pumpkin with brown in it, uh, maybe a little green pumpkin with black, um, and some type of a green pumpkin uh, trailer on there. And I'll dip the, the claws, you know, sometimes blue, sometimes red, uh, sometimes orange, just depending upon, you know, what I'm trying to resemble there. But the crawdad pattern is going to catch your fish in that water clarities that are over two foot. And my favorite water clarity to fish a crawdad pattern is when you've got like two to four foot visibility. I find that it works really good. Crawdad pattern also really good in all different weather conditions. It'll bite it on cloudy days, it'll bite it on clear days, windy days, calm days. It's a little bit more subtle than a shad pattern. You wouldn't think it is because you think shad more subtle than a crawdad. But in the water, um, a crawdad pattern will blend in a lot more than a shad pattern. So it, in my opinion, it's a more of a subtle thing. But that's my primary um, you know, color that I go to for, for most of the time. And a lot of times, um, I'll, like I said, I'll tweak it with some secondary colors or dye based upon just giving it a little bit different look. Just something that may, it just may look a little better to me in the water. Like for example, if it's cloudy and rainy out. I may put a little bit of chartreuse on the pinchers to brighten it up a little bit. You know, something along those lines. So guys, that's just a real tip, a quick tip. That's, that's my system on chatterbaits. I, I go by water clarity, water temperature a lot on the things. Ultimately, it's like anything else. You can have a foundation to begin with, but ultimately you have to bait, just sort of do what the fish are telling you, experiment a little bit with it. And that's why on chatterbait fishing, if I start catching some fish on a chatterbait, whether it be a shad pattern or a crawdad pattern, that's when I'll usually have two or three rods with some different colored chatterbaits on. I'll, I'll use the crawdad patterns, the shad patterns. I may go to a bluegill pattern. I'll mix them up um, when I know that they're biting the chatterbait to find out and tweak the best colors. It's sort of like a jerkbait. It's like you can catch a few fish on a jerkbait that's not the right color, but if you hit on that right color, you're going to catch 10 times as more. And it's the same on the chatterbait. Once you hit on the right color chatterbait, whether it be blade, blade colors can be a big deal too. Um, you know, that's just a, a real good thing to go to. Another thing on the blades, guys, on the crawdad pattern is um, I use fingernail polish a lot on them. I'll, put, I'll paint the blades orange. I'll paint them red sometimes. I'll paint them green. I'll paint them black. You know, just sort of mix up, mix them and match them with that a little bit. So... Anyway, I hope that helps you guys, you know, at least get a starting point with your chatterbait colors. Chatterbait is, guys, it's it's surprised me. It's one of those baits that has, it's really withstood the test of time. It is a big fish catching bait, and I thought it was going to be sort of like a fad, where it just sort of faded out a little bit, but there's something about this bait. It continues to be one of the most consistent quality fish producers year in and year out and it has been for the last decade now, I, don't, I really don't see it going away a little going away at all so um add them to your arsenal if you're weak at chatterbait fishing um you know just try to get good at it we're going to do more stuff on it if you guys got some questions specifically on chatterbait fishing shoot them in the comments and i'll be glad to answer them so thanks for tuning in and we see y'all later on